It was our 9-11. It was our neighborhood 9-11. For a small neighbor to lose that many children and to have that many injured, I think people talk about the 95 dead, but they don't talk about the over, over 100 that were injured uh, badly. Some of them were burned so badly, they got to the point where they didn't want to leave the house. There's stories about, um, you know, they'd be at a playground with their mother and kids were playing with them and then the mother would come over and say, don't play with them, you know. And the mother tried to explain, it's not contagious, these are burns, but you have enough experiences like that, you don't want to, you don't want to go out. It was hell-like conditions. Yeah. It was heat, smoke, flames. I was the second to last kid to get out, and when I hit that outside, I've never seen a sky such a beautiful shade of blue. I've never felt, I think it was 17 degrees, I've never felt cold air. It felt so good on my lungs. I'll never forget the feeling of euphoria, going from literally being dead to being almost like a death and resurrection, if you would. And that's, it was that type of experience. Our Lady of the Angels School Fire, right here in Chicago's west side. 92 children and three nuns lost their lives due to that fire. But you're only looking at that. Many, many people literally lost psychic and stuff on account of this fire. So you had quite a few that died, but you had quite a few mentally that affected them for the rest of their lives to this day. And this is something that basically didn't have to happen, but a lot of times we have things out there to where there's a reason why they happen and they won't happen again. And thank God, from what I've heard, we have not had anything like this happen again. There were no sprinkler systems. There were no smoke alarms. None, none. In fact, they did have two switches, two little light switches, and I believe they were like in the south building, and they were up, I heard, high enough to where the kids can't touch them, to where if there's a fire, we will throw those off and we'll be fine. That's our fire horn. There was no direct connect to the fire department. So that, and I'll tell you, if you ever went down into that area, and I went down, I had my life in my hands, but I went down there, and it wound up being, um, the, the fire department is off of Huron. It's like a minute away, I could walk from the fire department. The drawback is the fire department wasn't alerted. They weren't alerted at all. So because of not being alerted to this thing, they can't tell, but we're going to um, keep moving on this. And again, just to let you know, when they finally were alerted to this, not one call came from the school itself. The fellow by the name of John Kennedy, he was kind of like a fire inspector or whatever. Afterwards, he said, you know, I can tell where this fire started. It's in a perfect V, perfect V, right off the floor. In fact, the bottom was still there. And the flooring below it was still there. But he said, I can tell that this started in a perfectly. In fact, his end of it was, he said, I think this was set by human hands. That's what he said.